On the dawn of time, a game was announced. It's supposed to be the chosen one, a game that will allow us to find peace, will help us to defeat the global warming and destroy all the diseases, and will show us the true God. And now, finally, after all these years of waiting, it is here, and the world will never be the same. Cyberpunk 2077 did not meet the quality standard we wanted it to meet. I and the entire leadership team are deeply sorry for this. Please don't fault any of our teams for what happened. They all are incredibly talented and hardworking. Myself and the board are the final decision makers and it was our call to release the game. CD Projekt Red was one of the most respectable companies in video game industry and mostly because of their approach to their Witcher series with constant improvements, updates, huge DLCs and one of the best side quest missions in the whole video game industry. Cyberpunk was announced 8 years ago. The development actually started 4 years ago. I think in terms of marketing it is very good. But, as we can see, eventually this was not really smart. The marketing of the game presented Cyberpunk 2077 the marketing of Cyberpunk 2077 presented it as a groundbreaking, life-fucking-changing, live-your-wife-and-quit-your-job type of experience. Three delays made the situation even worse. People accepted all of those delays because of the claim of CD Projekt Red out when it's ready. But eventually every delay raised the expectations and hype of the game. Consumers probably thought that there has to be a really important reason to delay the game. This is for the best. Developers mentioned that it wasn't even possible to release this game in April. And when they delayed it again, still it was not enough time. Developers had to work from April until November for 6 days a week and probably around 12 hours a day to fix this game. In November we all found out that it was not ready yet. So the head office decided to give the developers 3 weeks to finish the most anticipated game of the decade. Now after the release of Cyberpunk we all can see the state of the game. And it's not even that it's not polished, it's just not finished. And you can see that a lot of things in the game are just crutches before the actual solution will be implemented into the game. And it's kind of sad to acknowledge that the developers and the marketing team had office, they were not the same team. I believe that developers of CD Projekt Red are not stupid not to understand that the game is not finished. And I do doubt that, for example, the police system in the game is something that they sat down on a meeting and said, yep, this looks perfect. And I am genuinely interested about the phrase out when it's ready. Who created it, developers or the marketing team? But either way, when the question was about making money during Christmas sales, no one cared already. But something that I cannot accept is the fact that these guys were working for 6 days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. They had crunches for more than a year. They were creating their child, which is beautiful, you can see it. And then the head department decides, ah, fuck it, let's throw it under the bus and we don't give a shit how much time you spend on it, we have to make money now, bitch. And then they all act like they didn't know that the game is in pre-pre-pre-pre-pre-alpha state or some shit. Every person who played this game experienced hundreds of bugs and I think CDPR definitely knew about them, but still decided to release the game. And I remember the documentary about the creation of God of War, where uh, Corey Balrog, the director, played it in his office before the release. He played it every time when they tweaked something, when they fixed something, and he played it all the way through a lot of times. And then he came to his workers, to the developers, and said something about stuff that he saw during his playthrough. And sadly, I don't believe that someone from CD Projekt Red did the same thing. Especially what the fuck happened with PlayStation and Xbox versions, it's out of my comprehension.
I imagine that the development in the end was rushed because they spent too much time creating the world design, but they forgot about making it actually interactive. Is Cyberpunk 2077, <laughs> Is Cyberpunk 2077 a good game? The world that CD Projekt Red has created is outstanding. If you don't think that the world design and the attention to details in the Night City is the best that you can find in video games right now, leave a comment which game has better and more detailed world than Cyberpunk. And I'm not talking about NPCs and interactive stuff. I'm just talking about visuals. The world design that they created with all the negatives is, I think, next gen and is breathtaking you're breathtaking check this out but of course only if you're playing on pc <laughs> the attention to detail uh, beauty of the world verticality reflections sometimes even without ray tracing game just makes you want to stop and look to go down the street then hop around the corner and go through some secluded alley and it still will have a lot of details and a lot of things and it will look so alive, it really feels alive. Seriously, I never experienced something like this in a video game. My first hours of playthrough, I didn't even sprint. I didn't even look at the map and I didn't try to fast travel or even use a car. I felt myself in that world. I was wandering around Chinatown, visiting some restaurants. It felt like I can do everything out there, like I can live there. But after five hours of playing, the magic started to fade away when you start to realize that the world is actually empty. Yes, the world is beautiful, well-crafted, it has insane verticality and attention to details, beautiful structure, but you cannot really interact with it. You can find a way to get to the roof of the building and on the roof it looks like someone lived there, it looks alive, but that's all. You can just look at this and loot some ashtrays and dildos. But still, with all the negatives that I just mentioned, I would say that this is the closest to the next-gen game world design that we got at this point. Let's talk about characters and story. People are divided here. Personally, I loved it and I still love it and I think Actors, voice actors and all the people who were involved in this as uh, performers, they actually made this game a great experience. Without them, it would be just a huge disappointment. Jackie, Judy, Dexter, Johnny Silverhand, Pan Am, Goro. These characters are making the game memorable. I literally cried in the end of prologue and I thought that maybe I could change the outcome somehow. But I stopped myself from googling because this is not how you should play an RPG game. You should face the fucking consequences. The side quests are also a highlight of the game. But people are still upset because they have an expectations. They know that CD Projekt Red made Witcher. And of course, this is a new game, so it has to have better side quests than Witcher. Personally, for me, even the small gigs, they felt interesting. Because the amazing world design is making even a simple fetch quest pretty enjoyable. Let's talk about gunplay. The game kind of exceeds an RPG level of gunplay. If you're saying that it's not good, it's only because of your expectation. Even though we don't have so many guns and different kinds of weapons as we expected, still it's good. And think about that, that the game is not actually an action game, it's an RPG game. Story-driven RPG game. But the marketing was so over the top that the game was advertised as a groundbreaking RPG, groundbreaking first-person shooter, groundbreaking graphics, groundbreaking everything. And of course people bought it. Just good gunplay was not enough for everyone. I enjoyed blade, blade fighting and gunplay a lot. I wanted to engage into combat every time and I think that means something. And right now on YouTube, if you will stop going through only bad news about cyberpunk, you can find a lot of great videos where people are role-playing as a fucking cyber ninjas. It looks more like Ghost Runner or Dishonored. But one of the worst things about the game, AI. 
As internet historian once said, the AI is more A than I. It's you! What's In my personal opinion, Cyberpunk is a nick is a next-gen experience. However, sadly, Cyberpunk right now is a broken experience. Imagine that your mom bought you an amazing Lego set and it has all the parts to build a cool construction, but turns out that this Lego is fucking fake and everything is fucking falling apart and pieces they don't fit and... Oh. It's really bizarre to see that some of the things are so detailed and they are so thought out so thoroughly and you can see the love that they put in this thing. But other obvious things, I think they didn't have time to do the car chasing properly. They didn't have time to make the police spawn properly. This was just a temporary solution and they had to release the game with a temporary solution and it's not the only one temporary solution that I found in this game. Enemies that aggro on you just when you're passing by in your car. This one bothers me the most, to be honest. Another thing is overlapping dialogues and broken physics in the cutscenes. And the cutscenes and the story is one of the strongest parts of the game. So you can basically ruin a strongest part of the game for yourself. And for someone it was like that. And the NPC's behavior is also a crutch. I don't... I refuse again, I refuse to believe that they decided that just ducking and then is what it should be. It's just, it makes me so lost. Usually in this game, you can see not the achievement that they actually accomplish something. You always can only see the attempt. And again, I refuse to believe that CD Projekt Red believe that yes, this is the solution. Out when it's ready. But still, if you like the game, you try to neglect all those bad parts and you try to immerse yourself more. And when you don't see any NPCs, when you're just walking around, you are there. And it's amazing. The game is really immersive when the random shit doesn't happen. Cyberpunk 2077 Cyberpunk 2077 has very polished side quests, has very polished dialogues and cut scenes. It almost feels like a huge interactive movie. And you already forgot that this game is an open world RPG. The feeling that you actually live in a cyberpunk city is truly next gen. But the mechanics of the game, the implementation is almost like a previous gen, not even the current gen. I can definitely say that after completing this game, I will try to complete it one more time, just to see if there is an actual point in choosing different dialogue scenes, what can change. I heard that everything is pretty underwhelming in terms of this, but I have to try it by myself, I think. Interestingly enough, the game made me appreciate the real world where I live more. I started to look at the reflections on the ground. I started to see things that I never saw. The world, my world, this whole city life that I don't like. I kind of found myself appreciate them a bit more. I definitely removed some negativity for a life in a big city. Some people are complaining a lot that even without the bugs, the game would be shitty. But I think that that is not actually true. We discussed some immersion breakers like police, like AI, like poor romance options. But I believe that those things, they can be fixed. I, I'm trying to look at this game without this prism of expectations because I think this is a great game. And of course, some journalists gave it 9 out of 10, which is just... What? Mm, that's a 10. I would personally give this game 7 out of 10, but also with the consideration that they will fix the bugs. Physics bugs and stuff, this is something that is not that important for the review. From the beginning, because of the marketing, this game wanted to be everything at the same time. They tried to be a next-gen open-world sandbox experience. They also tried to be next-gen story-driven RPG, where you have a lot of choices and the story changes because of your decisions. They also tried to have 
a groundbreaking next-gen gunplay. They wanted to create the most beautiful open world that they possibly could. And I think they actually achieved that thing. But there is not much more than a beauty in that world. Without the actual police system, well-thought NPC behavior, and the actual sandbox experience. With all the negatives combined, it's hard to say that the game is not fun, that the game is not good or even groundbreaking in some aspects. The game is just not finished. I would love to emphasize one thing and that's the point of this video actually. Don't blame the devs. This thing already got out of control. Developers are getting threats, death threats. First of all, these are people that do not owe you shit. They are working. They are working on a game. This is their job and they have to work twice as hard. This is business. They are just workers there. They do not control the release date. The developers cannot gather and say, oh no, the game is not finished. Let's work for one more year on it or for two more years because I don't want to work six days a week, 12 hours a day. You think that they can actually release the game when it's ready? We thought so. I thought so. But eventually it's not like that. Put yourself in their place. You're working hard, working overtime. You try to deliver the best thing as you possibly can, but you don't have time. And now, after the release of the game, people are hating on them. People are threatening them. And it's the developer's fault that some angry customers are thinking that everything in this world is only to make them happy. Think about the developers. Think about their lives, their work, their families. Of course, I'm not trying to defend CD Projekt Red overall. They lied, they made promises that they never accomplished. Yes, but it's not on the devs, it's not on the people who were working over time. They did their best and I think it's not their fault that the release date that were set by the head office was unrealistic. Personally, I respect their work and I don't regret buying this game. I want them to succeed. I want them to recover. But if you are not like me, if you just feel that they lie to you, that your expectations are not met and they are very bad company, I just wanted to say that do not hate on them. Just try to have a little bit of empathy to people who worked countless amount of hours just to deliver something that will make you happier. In retrospective, the community of kind and supportive consumers and people overall is what helped No Man's Sky to succeed and still keep on receiving awards by this day. People who are forgivable, supportive and can put themselves on other people's place instead of mindlessly complaining about everything just to make themselves feel more important. Those are the people who I think are making this world a better place. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you watch until the end, then probably I assume this. Consider subscribing to my channel. I will try to keep up with videos like this and I hope to improve in the future. Don't forget to leave a like so maybe more people could see this. And yep, thank you. Hope you're having a nice day. Stay safe everyone.